Sacco bona concta procedunt, rajeris lubicibus tuis, u cogitemos te inspirante que recta sum, et te gubernante adem at vaciamus, er dominosum hiesum Christum filium tuum, it te committed regnat unitatis ritus sancti dei, er omnia secula secula. Lexio pistere beati Jacobi apostoli, caris mies tote factores verbi et non auditores tantum, valentes vos metitos. Qui asiquis auditur est verbi et non factor, i comporabitur viro consideranti, vultum nativitati sue in speculos, Considerabit enim se et abit, et statim oblitus es qualis fueri. Qui autem perspexerit in elegem perfectam, libertatis et permanserit in ea, non auditur obliviosus factus, sed factur operis, hic beatus in facto suo eri. Si quis atem putat se religiosum esse, non refrenans linguam suam, sed se ducens cor suum, huius vana est religio. Religio munda et amaculata apodeum, e patrem ege, visitare pubilos et viduas, in a tribulatione meorum, et immaculum, immaculatum se custodire ab hoc seculo. Alleluia, alleluia. Grazie a tutti, se vi ho scelato, con si dimmi, se non si è alleluia, e gira a parte, e veni, e in mondo, e tu non mi vengo, e in mondo, e vado a parte, alleluia.
Dominos vobis gum, sequentia sancti evangelii, secondum Ioannem. In illo tempore dixit Jesus discipulis suis, amen, amen, dico vobis, si qui pezialitis patem in nomine meo tabit vobis. Usque modo non poetistis, si quid quam in nomine meo, petite ad acipietis, ugradium vestrum si plenum. Ecem o verbis locutus sum vobis. Venid ora cum iam non in plore verbis, loquor vobis, sed palam de patre non siabo vobis. In ye laudie in nomine meo petete, sed non dico vobis, quia ego rogabo patrum de vel vobis, ipsi enem pater amar vos, quia vos me amastis, hecrediritis quia ego adeo exibi. Exibia patre et veni in mundum, iterum bilinguo mundum et vado ad patrem. Digo de discipuli eius, et ce nunc palam loqueris et proverbium nullum dici. Nunc simus quia sis omnia et o non opus est tibi, ut quis te interroget in o credimus, quia deo existi. And today is the fifth Sunday after Easter. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of this week, the rogation days. And then uh, when we pray for the blessing of the Lord of our crops and to, uh, to sustain us for another year before he ascends into heaven on Ascension Thursday, which is a holy day of obligation. So remember to keep that day holy. Even though you may not be able to have Mass on that day, it is a holy day of obligation, contrary to what the new church says. And that, uh, so Thursday is a holy day of obligation, Ascension Thursday. The epistle of this of fifth Sunday after Easter, taken from St. James chapter 1. Dearly beloved, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if a man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he shall be compared to a man beholding his own countenance in a glass. For he beheld himself and went his way, and presently forgot what manner of man he was. But he that, that he that hath looked into the perfect law of liberty, and hath continued therein, not becoming a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. And if any man think himself to be religious, not bridling his own tongue, but deceiving his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Religion clean and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their tribulation, and to keep oneself unspotted from this world. And then the Gospel, taking that according to St. John, chapter 16. 
At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, And many men I say unto you, If you ask the Father anything in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto you have not asked anything in my name. I ask and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things I have spoken to you in Proverbs. The hour cometh when I shall no more speak with you in Proverbs, but shall show you plainly the Father. In that day you shall ask in my name. And I say not to you that I will ask the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you. And because you have loved me and have believed that I came out from God, I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. Again I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples say to him, Behold, now thou speakest plainly, and speakest no proverb. Now we know that thou knowest all things, and that thou needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. That's for the words of today's Holy Gospel. And the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Amen. In a few days, our Lord Jesus Christ ascends into heaven. And a few considerations on a doctrine of our holy faith, an infallible truth. We say there are four necessary truths that a man must explicitly believe in order to go to heaven. We can't believe these things uh, indirectly or implicitly, when you believe, for instance, that the Pope is infallible, we all know the Pope is infallible. When we believe the Pope is infallible, that means we believe whatever doctrines he taught infallibly over the last 2,000 years. You may not have memorized what all of those doctrines are, but by believing in the infallibility of the Church and the infallibility of the Pope, you believe whatever he taught. And therefore, you can contain in that belief is a belief in the Immaculate Conception, Contained in that belief is the belief in the transubstantiation, the Catholic Church is the, true, is the true church outside of which there is no salvation, and so on. You believe all these truths called implicitly contained inside of the truth that I believe that whatever Holy Mother believes and teaches is infallibly true, Holy Mother Church, and I believe it with all my heart. But there are some doctrines which you cannot believe implicitly. You can't say, for instance, as many modern heretics say, as long as you believe in God, that there is a God, and there's only one God. It doesn't matter if you believe Jesus Christ is that God, as long as you believe in whatever the true God is, and that means Jesus Christ. No, you must explicitly believe that the Son of God became man. You must explicitly believe that He is the second person of the Blessed Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the Father and the Holy Ghost are not three gods, but one God. These three are one. And that He is God. And implicitly contained in this is the belief of all the things that He taught in the sacred scripture, and all things He taught in the gospel, all things He teaches in His holy church. That's included. But there are two other truths which must be explicitly believed besides the blessed Trinity and that God the Son became man to die on our cross for our sins. That is, God created us out of nothing. God created every single thing from the beginning. Now, modern evil men called evolutionists, they deny this doctrine. Some so-called creation evolutionists, they say, well, God created a, 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 the first zygote, he created the God particle, and it exploded. And then, over time, came ants, rocks, stars, different kinds of animals, and finally man. And they were not created. They just simply came into being by chance processes of people meeting each other. We say in the Apostles' Creed, in the Nicene Creed, in the Mass, we believe that God created all things in the beginning of time. He created all things in the beginning, not over billions of years. It's a heresy to believe that all things are created over billions and billions of years. And then finally, in the last few thousand years, came man and Christ. In the beginning, God created all things visible and invisible. He is a creator of ants, 
He is a creator of rocks. He is a creator of baboons, the creator of cows, the creator of man, the creator of angels, the creator of frogs, and of all things. He created them out of nothing in the beginning of time. Modern man thinks they just happened through chance processes and through the development of creatures who thought they needed something that a cow was hungry and he needed to eat more than other animals so he grew four stomachs and so this foolishness is all around God created all things from the beginning there are four necessary truths God is the creator of all things visible and invisible from the beginning your soul is invisible so is the soul of a cow Cows have a soul, their soul ceases to exist when they die. All living things have a soul and they're invisible. The nature of a rock is invisible, but the color of the rock is visible. So rockness was created by God and also the visible part of the rock. And antness was created by God and also the visible part of the ant. And human nature was created by God and also the visible part of the man. And all are created by God from the beginning. And then there is a fourth truth what St. Jerome considers today. God is the rewarder. God is the creator of all things. God is the rewarder of all rational things. God rewards the angels and God rewards men. And it is an infallible dogma that every man must know by natural reason when he looks out of the world that God is a rewarder, that God shall reward the just and God shall reward the unjust. He is going to reward them both. Hence, St. Jerome says in his sermon today, only a few days our Lord Jesus Christ is going back up into heaven. He came to earth and died on a cross for all men. There isn't one exception. He also died for all the angels. Lucifer, St. Michael, Judas, St. Peter. He died for all men. But know this, brethren, he did not rise for all men. He died for all men. He shed his drop, every drop of blood that Lucifer might respond to grace and accept that God's going to become man. He died that Judas might respond to grace and repent of his wickedness. And he died for St. Peter and he died for Adam and he died for every single angel such as St. Michael and Gabriel and Raphael. He died for them all. But know this, brethren, he did not rise for them all. He only rose for us. Everyone saw Jesus Christ in his death. The soldiers did see him rise from the tomb, but it happened so quickly, and they saw him rise, and they were terrified, but they didn't see his glory, but they saw him rise from the tomb. But then he appeared only to the just. He appeared to St. Peter, he appeared to Doubting Thomas. He appeared to St. Mary Magdalene. He appeared to hundreds and sometimes a thousand. He appeared to so many. He did not appear to all after his resurrection. This is a reminder of a doctrine of our faith and an infallible truth that God has come to judge the living and the dead and he will judge the living and he will judge the dead. And everyone shall receive his judgment, but not all shall receive his glory. Not all are going to see him in his glory and in his, in, in his magnificence. And here we read from the book of Wisdom, chapter 5. By, uh, Solomon wrote this book. What is it that is God speaks about the just and about the damned? The damned shall suddenly go to death. And then it says in Wisdom chapter 5, Then shall the just stand with great constancy against those that have afflicted them and taken away their labors. One day the just will stand, and they will stand with constancy. Now this word in Latin, and this word in, in I believe in the Hebrew also, 
Constancy means harshness. When a man stands constant, when an enemy is attacking the wall, if the defender is constant, it means he stands with a firmness that will not be stopped. It's like taking a car and running at 100 miles an hour against a concrete wall. The wall remains constant, and the car is crushed into destruction. That's what constance means. The just shall stand with constance. He shall stand with constance against those that have afflicted them. The tears of the just have cried to heaven. The unjust have persecuted the just in this life. And the just shall one day stand with constancy, and there shall be a begging of mercy. We'll read about the begging of mercy. They begged for mercy on the day of the flood. There were hundreds of million, the estimate is about three to five billion people on earth when the flood came. Three to five billion people, and they begged mercy. Three to five billion people, and some of them came next to the ark, and they begged entrance. And Noah was not interested. And his sons were not interested. And it says in the book of Jeremiah, Pray not for this people, for I will not hear thee. God is a rewarder. He is not only the one that gave mercy, he is the one that rewards. And it says also in the sacred scripture, All shall rise, but unto their own order. Every man is with, is, 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 has received the blood of Christ. But when we die, we're going to rise unto our own order. And there are only two orders. The one order is called the order of pandemonium. The order of the Lord of the Flies, Beelzebub. The order of destruction and chaos. And this is the kingdom of hell. And it has an order. And the other is the order of the kingdom of the Rex Pacificus, the king of peace. And it has an order. And we belong to this order, one order or the other. And we decide in this life what order we're going to belong to. And the just man recognizes there shall come a, a uh, rewarding. And the just man stands in constancy. And these, the damned, seeing it, shall be troubled with a terrible fear. And they shall be amazed at the suddenness of their unexpected salvation. The damned shall be amazed at the suddenness of the just unexpected salvation. The damned shall say within themselves, repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit the just the damned shall repent there's a difference between the repentance of the damned and the repentance of the just when you commit a mortal sin you go to confession you say bless me father for i have sinned i murdered my mother-in-law I, I i i robbed 12 banks well don't murder your mother-in-law again <laughs> Say, you tell God you're sorry. Don't murder your mother-in-law again. Ego tells all about Macathy's tuis, and there's going to be a brunch afterwards. You have a repentance. You say three Hail Marys. You promise not to murder your mother-in-law again. And it's finished. The repentance is finished. It's a very short repentance. You may repent like the beloved St. Peter did and Mary Magdalene and spend 30 years, 40 years, 50 years weeping over your sins and begging a greater love of God in your heart. And then it's finished. The repentance of the just is very short. But what about the repentance of the damned? They also shall repent. They shall say within themselves, repenting, says Wisdom chapter 5, and groaning for anguish of spirit. These are they whom we had sometime in derision and for a parable of reproach. We fools esteem their life madness and their end without honor. Behold how they are numbered among the children of God and their lot is among the saints. Therefore we have erred from the way of truth. Notice these are the words of the damned. We call Satan and we call the devils the father of lies. Lies only exist here on earth. There are no lies in hell. 
There is not one single falsity in hell. The damned are speaking, and all that is happening is that Solomon is looking down and listening to the ears with his ears to the words of the damned, and they speak the truth. There isn't one lie in hell. And they speak the truth, and they say, Therefore we have erred from the way of truth, and the light of justice hath not shined unto us, and the sun of understanding hath not risen upon us. We wearied ourselves in the way of iniquity and destruction, and have walked through hard ways, but the way of the Lord we have not known. We have walked through hard ways. It's interesting about that word. Bishop Sheen gives an example. He says, what's harder, being sober or being a drunk? What's harder? It's much harder to be a drunk than it is to be sober. What's harder, to be impure and filled with the lust or to be pure and chaste? It's much harder to be impure and filled with lust. Sin is always harder than justice. And hence it says, the damned recognize, we have walked through hard ways. We wearied ourselves in iniquity. You notice the devil tells you, rest in iniquity. It's easy to sin. But when they go to hell, they recognize we wearied ourselves in iniquity. That's why people who live in sin have to take drugs. They have to see a psychiatrist. They have to see a psychologist. They live in total depression. They are filled with anger. They have misery in their guts. They have ulcers. They have every kind of problem. So what's easier, says Bishop Sheen, to be sober or to be a drunk? If you're sober, you don't have liver disease. You don't lose your friends. You're not sick all the time. You don't feel like committing suicide. You don't have to lie every day. But if you are a drunk, you have terrible hangovers, you have great depression, you have to live with a perpetual lie. You die young because of your own sins. You live in misery, and then it doesn't get better when you die. You go straight to eternal damnation and straight to eternal fire and you dream of the good old days when you were miserable on earth. They have walked through hard ways. They have wearied themselves in iniquity. What hath pride profited us? And what bo advantage hath the boasting of riches brought us? All those things are passed away like a shadow, like a post that runneth on like a little river, a little rubber that runneth on. All these things are passed away by the shadow. And then the Holy Ghost gives examples of the life of the damned. Chapter 5 of the Book of Wisdom. We continue, verse 11. Or as when a bird flieth through the air, or the passage of, where, where the passage of no mark can be found, but only the sound of wings beating the light air, and parting it by the force of her flight, she moved her wings, she hath flown through, and there is no mark found afterwards on her way. They are very wealthy men. They are great kings. They are really popular sportsmen. They are heroes of Hollywood. They are men living in sin. They write the book, and you can only buy their book from 1999, how they became a multi-billionaire. And they boast for their riches, and they are men of glory. But what happens? There is nothing left of the path of them. Or was it an arrow is shot at the mark? Or is it, 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 the divided air presently cometh together again, so the passage is not known. An arrow passes through the air, the passage is not known. Or, as, so also being born, forthwith the damned cease to be, and they have been able to show no mark of virtue, but are consumed in our own wickedness. The damned are speaking about their own lives. We travel through the air like an arrow travels through the air. We travel through the sea like a boat travels through the sea. We travel through this life like a bird beating its wings and making noise. After we passed, there was no sign of our presence. We left no virtue. Our wickedness left nothing left. It is all forgotten. Now remember this concerning the damned. They're going to receive their justice. And there shall be not one stain, not one mark upon this earth of all the murders, all the impurities, 
all of the, the secret meetings to cause evil, all of the sins of all types, every place where sin has been committed, it shall be wiped out, and the remainder of it shall be like the path of a ship in the sea, like the path of a bird in the air, like a path of the arrow in the air. It shall find its mark, and yet there shall be nothing left behind. The Holy Ghost tells us the dam is like an arrow that finds its mark. It hits the heart. It kills. And what it kills, it dies. But there is nothing remaining of its journey, and it all decays and is all gone. And this is a holy dogma that all men know by natural reason. Such things are these sinners, uh, such things as these, the sinners said in hell. Here Solomon is looking at the sinners in hell. Something is said, the sinner is said in hell. For the hope of the wicked is as dust, which is blown away with the wind, and as a thin froth, which is dispersed by the storm, and as smoke that is scattered abroad by the wind, and as a remembrance of a guest one day that passeth by. That's going to be the memory. If somebody visited your house 30 years ago and he left, you don't remember him. This is the remembrance of the damned. And their hopes are going to be like smoke in the wind. They send smoke up in the air that they hope it stays, that it remains. You get a bridge named after you. The John the, John, the rich scumbag, idiot, dweeb, and loser memorial library. And he gets, his, he gets his library named after him, and nobody cares about what his name is on the, on the, on the library, and the, uh, nobody even reads the books. <laughs> and it is going to be that way. But the just shall live forevermore, and their reward is with the Lord. There are two rewards. And the care of them with the Most High. Therefore shall they receive a kingdom of glory and a crown of beauty at the hand of the Lord. For with his right hand he shall cover them, and with his holy arm he shall defend them. And his zeal will take armor, and he will arm the creature for the revenge of his enemies. There is vengeance there is vengeance. God says it multiple times in the sacred scripture. Revenge is mine. I will repay. And there shall be vengeance. Those that bring about the destruction of the church, those that bring about the death of the innocent, those that bring about the abortion of innocent babies, those that bring about the destruction of civilizations and the attack of the Holy Mother Church, those that bring many innocent men to death, there shall be vengeance. And his zeal, the zeal of God, will take armor, and he will arm the creature with the revenge of his enemies. He will put on justice as a breastplate. He will take true judgment instead of a helmet. He will take equity for an invincible shield, and he will sharpen his severe wrath for a spear, and the whole world shall fight with him against the unwise. God is going to take the just with him, and he is going to fight against the unwise, just like Moses when he came down from the mountain and discovered that they were worshiping the golden calf, he said, who is on the Lord's side? And they came to the Lord's side. And then he said, kill every one of them on the other side. Let not one survive. And Moses, at the age of 120, took out a sword. Well, actually, he was only 80 at the time. He took out a sword. And he went and he killed his fellow Jews. And they killed 30,000 in one day. It was a day of vengeance. God does have vengeance and there will be vengeance. The just and their, and, and their, shall, their, their, their injustice done against the just shall be repaid. And all of that, their, their little brief time of glory shall come to an end and it shall end forever. He shall sharpen his spear, his wrath for a spear, and the whole world shall fight against him, against the unwise. Then shafts of lightning shall go directly from the clouds, as from a bow well bent, and they shall be shot out, and they shall fly to the mark, the same mark, the mark of the sin of the damned. And thick hail shall be cast upon them from the stone, casting wrath. The water of the sea shall rage against them, and the rivers shall run together in a terrible manner. A mighty wind shall stand up against them, and as a whirlwind shall divide them, and their iniquity 
shall bring all the earth to a desert, and wickedness shall overthrow the thrones of the, uh, of, of the mighty, and they shall be completely destroyed, and the Lord shall laugh them to scorn. We must remember that we are often mistreated, and we often are assaulted for being the friends of God. We often, and the world hates God's followers in every age, but it is an infallible truth and the dogma of our holy faith, one of the four necessary truths that every Catholic and every human being who wants to go to heaven must believe, that God is the creator of all things, visible and invisible. That he became man and died on the cross for our sins, and he is truly God, the Son, who became man, and there is a blessed trinity, and he is the rewarder of the just and the rewarder of the unjust, and no man shall escape his reward. And in this life we decide, do we belong to the order of Christ and his holy Catholic Church, or do we belong to the order of Satan and the chaos and pandemonium of the Beelzebub, the Lord of the Flies? And each shall receive his justice according to the order that he chose to be in. And God died for all men, but he rises only for those that are just. And close to God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Credo in unum Deum. But <laughs> The <laughs>
Pogs Bobbies or Amos. But if you do, it's a winter. Dominum day and nostrum, and the birth of my reaping, both of Nadi Tales, pupils with time on the young, my vitam, and non dairy, come of heaven, paid as males, and it is dominant to the normal mobile for the country and the young, and the country and the young, and the young.
per omnia secura secura rom. Dominus vobiscum. Sorsum corda. Gracias agamus Domino Deo Nostro. Vere dignum et justum est, tecum et salutare, te quidem domini omni tempore, sed in hoc patissimum gloriosius predicare, cum pasca nostrum immolatus est Christus, ipse enem veros est agnus, qui absolit peccata mundi. Qui mortem nostra moriendo destruxi, ed vitam resorgendo reparavi. Ed ideo cum angelis et archangelis, cum trones et dominationibus, cum quium imice celestis exercitus, imnum gloriae tu ecanimus, Sine fine dicentes. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deo Sabo. Benedictus Dei, 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 Hosanna in Chelsea. Benedictus Dei, 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 Hosanna in Chelsea.
I'll be talking about guitar, but... Per omnia secula seculorum. Oremos. Precia per salataribus moniti a divine institutione formati audemos dicere. Pater noster qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomem tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua sicod in celo, Ed in terra, panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, ed dimite nobis debita nostra, sicud et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, ed ne nos inducas in tentasi, panem. Et omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Pax et Domini sit semper vobiscum.